Hello, this is Cityscape, a regular vodcast featuring people, places, and ideas that impact Livonia. I'm Dan West with the Livonia Chamber of Commerce. The operational disruptions with COVID-19 outbreak has been a challenge for many businesses. However, there are some local businesses that have kept busy. Since many have been unable to travel this summer, many have found other things to do locally, such as getting in more swings at one of Livonia's three city golf courses. Tom Welsh, for the past two decades, has led the company that manages those golf courses owned by the city of Livonia, Idlewild, Whispering Willows, and Fox Creek. Tom, thank you for joining us today here at the Fox Creek Golf Course. Welcome. And um, can you, uh, Tom, start by saying, how has this year been compared to past years? Well, I think like uh, every other business, it's been a, it's been a kind of a roller coaster of a year. We started with basically nothing and without golf and without golf carts for some part of the time. And then all of a sudden, you know, with people being home and working from home, then all of a sudden we got, we got golfers everywhere. So it's been, uh, you know, kind of an unusual year for us in that our, be- our business is usually pretty steady and usually dictated by the weather. But uh, these conditions have, you know, forced us to, to uh, rethink how we do our business. So it's been, it's been very interesting and um, we've got a lot of help uh, from the city of Livonia and from the Parks and Rec Department and, um, and the people that work for us in uh, TJW Inc. that manages the golf course. So. Now, Tom, you've gone from uh, you know, being shut down throughout April and uh, portions of May, and then you opened and then boom. Talk about that transition where you went from like zero miles an hour to like 100 miles an hour. Right, I, I guess it's like one of those electric cars, you know, it, as soon as you put the key on it, it went mm-hmm. crazy. And uh, the fact that a lot of people were home, kids were home from school, um, and there are not a lot other, not a lot other, a lot of other sports to get involved in that they would let you do. So, golf was one of the safest things that they could do. Could be outside, and and you could be socially distanced from uh, other people. Uh, was a little different with the carts because we were down to no carts at one point, um, single rider carts for for quite a bit of the time, uh, and then we went back to sort of normal operations with that. But um, you know, trying to keep um, our golfers safe and and the people that work with us safe was was a big challenge for us because something we were totally not used to. So had to you know rethink that and get some advice from other people in the city and outside the city to make sure we did it safely. And the fact that golf is sort of knit into the fabric of Livonia, there's so many diehard golfers uh, in this area and they wanted to be a little closer to home and the conditions here were, were good for them to play. and. So uh, they, they sort of took advantage of that, so. Yeah. We are playing every Monday. It's a group of uh, former high school people from Catholic Central and Detroit. And uh, we do a birthday club here once a month, but we've decided to play golf every Monday. We were wondering what we were gonna do and uh, social distancing and all that. So we decided if people were interested to come out and play some golf. Definitely it's the most golf I've played since college, so probably already I've played 30 times. COVID has really affected everything that I've done. I mean, we don't go out to the store much, but out here on the golf course, you certainly can do that in social distance. We are now joined by Ted Davis, who is the superintendent of Livonia Parks and Recreation. Ted, thanks for joining us. Um, how rare is it to have a city of 36 square miles like Livonia to have three municipal golf courses? I think it's really rare, um, but Livonia has, a, has an embarrassment of riches when it comes to parks and recreation. We always have, uh, whether it's 1,400 plus acres or 65 park sites and obviously three 18 hole municipal golf courses. and. And this year, you're seeing uh, the need for it again. Um, you know, we've had a record after being closed for for March and April. We've had a record May, a record June, a record July, and I am pretty sure we're on pace to have a record August. So, and that's a testament to, of course, our residents making use of it, the high quality of recreational amenities we have. Uh, these three golf, golf courses are jewels, and and all are a little different. Uh, so if you're a sprayer like me, Fox is your course. If you're a, a little better player, probably Willows or Idlewild, which are, I think, tougher courses. But uh, you know, I think we've seen during this pandemic 
um, the importance of parks and recreation in the community. And that leads to my next question. You mentioned there's 1,400 acres of park space in Livonia. Now, again, not many cities this size have that kind of it. This year, with people being forced to stay home because they can't travel, how has the park space been utilized in Livonia this summer? We're seeing what's so important right near our own homes. That local park you have, that playground you visit, uh, the ball field replay catch with your children on, uh, the golf course where you go with your buddies to have some sense of normalcy. I think we're seeing how important parks and recreation really is in everyone's day-to-day -day life, where we've been spoiled. And Livonia, we are spoiled, thankfully. We're, we have, we're millage supported. We have that beautiful 150,000 square foot rec center, but now you're seeing the value of all the outdoor amenities we have. You look at strategically what we've had to do to adjust this year. Is there gonna be things that change the way you and Parks Re Recreation think going forward in the future with all that we've learned and experienced this year? Uh, that's a great question. I think there will be. I think again, what you're gonna see is the, pl in the increased importance in outdoor amenities. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say we've been reliant on, an, on a, you know, our beautiful Jackie Kirksey Recreation Center, but I think we've been spoiled from a staff standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, I've reminded our staff, there are other places in the world that don't have a rec center. Mm -hmm. They do outdoor programming, people dress appropriately and show up. Uh, and I think that's what we're going to have to be more reliant on and more creative, where we've had this fallback um, position of the rec center, and, it, and we have been spoiled. And I think we're going to have to be a little more creative and think outside the box and look to even what some other communities do that aren't as fortunate as us to kind of reboot programming. But I think a lot of these things we're seeing are things that are gonna stick with us for the foreseeable future. Great, Ted, thank you. Thank you. And we thank all of you for watching this edition of Cityscape. We'll see you next time.